about age 20, 21, I said, you know what, dad, I just can't get good people. And he looked me dead in the eye. My dad was a very blunt man. He said, Brad, you get the people you deserve. Mm. You're an average manager running an average business. The highest caliber a person wants to work for you is average. Wow. So if you want great people to work for you, you've got to become a great leader. You've got to run a great company, become a great manager. When you know how to do that, then great people will apply to your company. Right? Hello, now. hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential and together change the world. Listen, entrepreneurs, leaders, you do not want to miss this episode. If this is your first time joining us, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell and hit that like button. This will be greatly appreciated in helping getting out this content to great leaders and great individuals like yourself. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Brad Sugars. Brad is the founder and chairman of Action Coach Business Coaching. He is internationally known. Brad is a best-selling author, keynote speaker, and over the course of his 30-year career as an entrepreneur, Brad have an amazing program. Look at the show notes below for this amazing discount. Please help me welcome Brad with Revolutionize Your Business. This is Cedric Francis, and you're listening to the Lead to Greatness. Most of the business stuff I'm known for, above all of these books, what's that, 17 books, my 18th book, Raise Your Hand Marketing, comes out in November. Action Coach is the company I'm most known for because uh, what do we now? We have about 1,100 offices in 83 countries teaching business people how to be better business people. So wow. helping people succeed in business. So um, the other 50 odd companies that I've bought and built and sold over my lifetime, uh, I'm sort of more in the background of those, everything from... You know, currently I still, like I currently have either major shares or am the CEO or the chairman of nine companies. I run those in two days a week, uh, wow. Tuesdays and Thursdays, hence you and me here on a Tuesday, Cedric, that's there amazing. you go, because <laughs> uh, that's the two days a week I work. And uh, other than that, I I, I guess uh, I most of what I do these days is buy and sell companies. That's really what I do. I've just... And so by the learnings I get in that is what helps me become a great author and a great teacher of all the things that we do. When I started out, my entrepreneurial journey started out buying broken companies and fixing them. So finding companies where the management was bad, you know, and they, they were still making money somehow, like they, they still made money, but it was not good. So I'd buy those broken companies, put in good marketing, good sales, good management, good leadership, and you know, just change the business and then sell that business. And then what I've started doing in the last probably seven, eight years is I buy companies that I see should be much bigger than what they are. They're great companies, but they're in one city. Wow. They're a great, you know, you know, when you watch that movie, The Founder with Ray Kroc, what he did is he found the McDonald's and he said, yeah. this should be on every street corner. That's what I do wow. now. So mm. uh, I, I did that with a, a property management company down in Texas. We ended up selling that out to a Silicon Valley firm. Wow. Uh, I'm doing that now with a, co a commercial cleaning business out of Australia that uh, we filled. We It was in one city and now it's all across Australia. We open in Texas in uh, fourth quarter and we open in the UK uh, in second quarter next year. So I just take businesses that I see are great and I globalize them or, or blow them up sort of thing and put them all across the country because that to me... It's, it's that scale. So I teach people there's six layers to building a business. You start with mastery because my definition of a business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. Mm -hmm. if, if I got to be there, then I, I not only am I the hardest working person in the room, but I work for an idiot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, and, and I had to learn that along the way. I, when I first started out in business, Cedric, I thought that the idea was for me to be the hardest working person in the business. Mm -hmm. As the owner, I should be the one. I believe that stupidity of hustle and grind. My statement now is hustle and grind is the new stupid. Mm. Um, what happened was <laughs> as a young man, I worked so dang hard and I wore it as a badge of honor. To me, it was like, look at me. I'm working six days a week, 18 hours a day. I'm sleeping at my office at least one night a week on the couch. That's how hard I'm working. I was working so hard. I was covering up all of the problems in my business. I was covering up that the sales team wasn't doing their job. I was covering up that the marketing team was not delivering on their promise. Mm. I was covering up those things by working too hard rather than fixing those things. I covered it up. 
And that's why my business does business coaching because most business owners need a coach to hold them accountable to growth. Big businesses have a board of directors and a shareholders to hold them accountable to growth. Who holds the average business owner accountable to growth? Mm. There's not too many people. And that's why Action Coach was born way back 30 odd years ago now. So when I go into a business, I look at it in a three-pronged thing. So first of all, I look at it, is it a sales and marketing problem? Is it a, an, an administrative type problem, finance and admin, or is it mm. an operational problem? So I look mm. at those three areas. Mm. Now, if it's an administration and finance problem, they're not billing correctly, they're not doing, that's dead easy. You just fire those people and hire in people that can actually do the admin and the marketing, like the mm. detail-oriented people. Mm. You know, and in most cases, like a business that started by a salesperson is really great at sales and marketing, but awful at the other areas of the business. Business mm. started by an engineer yeah. is usually really great at operations and okay at finance and admin and awful at sales and marketing. So mm. you'll sort of see where it fits in to, to that scenario. So <laughs> I went to my dad at about age 20, 21. I said, you know what, dad, I just can't get good people. And he looked me dead in the eye. My dad was a very blunt man. He said, Brad, you get the people you deserve. Mm. You're an average manager running an average business. The highest caliber a person wants to work for you is average. Wow. So if you want great people to work for you, you got to become a great leader. You got to run a great company, become a great manager. When you know how to do that, then great people will apply to your company. Right now, no great person's ever applying to your company. And it was like, oh, stabbed in the heart. Thanks, mm. dad, really. So when dad said that to me, I had to go about the study. I had to learn. How do I create a great business? How do I become a great business person? Because Business is never going to get easier. You got to get better at business. Mm. Let's be blunt about that. Sales isn't wow. getting easier. You got to get better at sales. Marketing's not getting easier. Get better at marketing. So I said, I'm going to go and learn and become the best at management and the best at leadership. Now, somewhere in the 90s, management became a bad word. It's like, you don't want to be a manager. Don't micromanage people. You want to be a leader. That is the dumbest statement I've heard in a long time. Like, <laughs> you know, why? Do brand new employees need micromanagement? Yes, Yes, they are babies. They are children in your company. If yeah. it would, Do you micromanage your one-year-old? Yes. Why? So they don't die. Yes. Okay. A brand new employee needs micromanagement. They need daily management. Why? Because here's the two things. I'm going to break management and leadership down for you in 60 seconds. Management is creating competent, productive people. It's about competency and productivity. If you have lack of competency, management problem. You have lack of productivity, management problem. Now, management, by the way, is a system. It's a systematic methodology of meetings and communication and forms. Leadership is an art form, and leadership is also about two things. Leadership is about passion and focus. So if I have people who are productive and competent, they're managed well, and then people who are passionate and focused, they're led well. I have an amazing company. I have a great company. If, however, I lack one of those four things, if I lack focus, no one knows what the goal is. Everyone's going in different directions. They can be competent. They can be productive. They can be passionate. But everyone's going in different directions. We fail. Mm. If, I've, if I lack passion, everyone's focused, but no one's passionate. They're all bored by it. They're all just, mm. eh, yeah, we're here to do it. We're competent. We're productive, but we're mm. bored. We're not having a great company. Yeah. And the same goes for the other two. So bad management or lack of management. And, and when people say, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, my management strategy is my door is always open. You idiot, go away. That is the <laughs> dumb, second dumbest thing I've heard today. You know, why? Because what happens is management is about creating competency and productivity. So you have to micromanage them in the beginning. As you build competency, your level of management disappears. Wow. It decreases and decreases. Yes. As I coach them, mentor them, train them, send them to training, build that human. Because here's how you build a business. I build the people, they build the business. People say, how do you run nine companies in two days a week? I've built great CEOs. I build my humans, they build my business. Those are <laughs> a load of knowledge bombs. Oh my goodness, Brad. Brad, you really helping us. I want, let's, let's talk about... Third Edge program. What, oh, yeah. what is the calluses and the creativity behind this and why? You know, I turned 50 and uh, or I was about to turn 50. And I said, you know, what am I going to, what's my legacy? And yes, I've created great companies and I got thousands of employees. We do hundreds of millions of dollars a year and all that sort of stuff. But I sat down and said, you know what I want to do? 
I want to record everything I know. So I built a TV studio in my office and hired a videographer guy or gal at the time. Now it's a guy. Wow. And um, I wrote down everything I knew about business and I turned it into 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Hence 30x. It's 30, 30 minutes a day for 30 days with me. Now, most people are blown out by about day eight or nine, Cedric, because by you see how fast I teach. Absolutely. Right? Just here today. So that's that's what I do, 30 minutes a day. So it's a 30x challenge. I then once I finished business, I was like, well, maybe I should teach everyone everything I know about success. Because mm. success is different. Life is different. So yeah. let's go through all the life principles, all of the success formulas, like my formula of dream, goal, learn, plan, act. You want to be successful in life? Dreams. What's your score out of 10 on dreams? You know, do you have them documented, written down? Are they in picture format? What are they? If you have, if your dreams aren't written down, don't expect them to happen. Like mm. if a man, if a genie turned up tomorrow and said, show me a written list of all of your dreams in your life and I'll make them come true. And you went, well, I don't have a written list. You're out. Oh, you know, next, who's got a written list? I'll make wow. that dream come true. And, you know, that's that's a simple thing. But once you've got your dreams and they're 10, 20, 30 years out into the future, turn your dreams into goals. Anything inside five years, you've got to have a goal, smart test it, do that whole thing. Like I teach this formula for a half an hour on that program. And, and so how do you do that? And once you know what your goal is, then you got to do the learning. Because this is where most people fail at goals. They read that book, The Secret, and they think, oh, if I, if I, as long as I think positive and own my way to success. No, that's a complete load of BS. <laughs> I know it's my initials, so I'm going to lean into the term, all right? <laughs> I, I made a decision when I met Jim Rohn, 16 years of age, sitting down there writing notes. I ran down to Mr. Rohn at the end of the seminar and said, Mr. Rohn, please sign my notes. He signed my notes. And I said, what's one thing I can do to be successful? He said, son, read a book a week for the rest of your life. And I said, great. I made a decision right there in that room, Brisbane City Town Hall. I am going to retire financially at age 25, wow. like nine years. Told my buddy, Leon, Leon told his dad, Leon's dad decided that we needed to sit down and be told how that doesn't happen, can't happen, won't happen for you. Once when I bought my first jet, I thought, how can I land this on Pompadour Street and just wave at Leon's dad? <laughs> but the thing was, he was technically correct, Cedric. Mm. Technically, he was correct. 16-year-old version of Brad had absolutely no ability to do what I'd set my goal to do. Mm. I had to grow. See, when you set a goal, the reason you set a goal is to know who do I need to become? Who do I need to grow into? How do I need to grow in order to make that a reality? The simple way to look at that is if I set a goal of running a marathon, I've never run a marathon, I know how I've got to grow. I got to change my diet. I got to start running. I got to get training. I got to join a club. I got to get a coach. I got to get, you know what I mean? Like, But for some reason in business or in wealth or in success, people seem to think, Eh, you know, I just set the goal. And no, once you set the goal, it tells you what you need to read. It tells you what you need to study. It tells you why you better subscribe to Cedric's podcast. Don't just watch this podcast. Hit the subscribe button now. Do that thing. Don't kid yourself that you're going to get there without growth. Right. And the, the learning work is the hardest work. Yeah. And so if you're not willing to grow, I always joke with people say, listen, don't complain to me about the results you didn't get for the work you didn't do. Mm. And the hardest work is the learning work. I've written 17 books on success and business and money and wealth. My 18th comes out next week. I've written more books than most people have read on it, Cedric. And that kills me. Wow. Don't, don't tell me you want to be successful. Read a book. Wow. But the point is dream, goal, learn. Once you've done the learning, then you create the plan. And then from the plan, you go to work. So that's the formula for success. So then when I finished creating 30X Life, Cedric, I said, I'm going to teach wealth. So I did 30 days of how to build wealth. How do you invest? How do you invest in real estate? How do you invest in businesses? When you're buying a company, what should you look for? When you're selling a business, how should you sell a business? Wow. So I put it all down and, and stupid, stupid me, guess how much I sell them for? $99 <laughs> each, They're 99 bucks. Why? <laughs> because I, I got plenty of money. I don't need the money, but I want you to at least part with enough that it kind of hurts if you don't do it. I should charge like a thousand dollars. So it's really painful if you don't do it type thing. But, you know, we run the 30 X challenge uh, every month. You can join a challenge and you go through it with a hundred other people. And there's a hundred people go through it every month. And in different parts of the world, we have a hundred in the UK, a hundred in different parts of the U S and I, I like them to do all 90. Cause my theory is, if, if I can change the way you think about life, money, and business in 90 days, if I can change how you think, then I can change the rest of your life. Cedric, what, I, what I do is I, I tell people, 
you pay me for my time. You don't pay me for my knowledge. And that's why when someone flies me to go somewhere to speak, I make them pay me a ton of money because I'm leaving my house. I'm leaving my family. My house is nicer than any hotel they're going to put me in. You know, my car is better than any car they're going to drive me in. I mean, uh, yeah, you pay me to come and get away, leave my family for a few days. You don't pay me to speak. I'll give my speech for free. I, I do a couple of courses every year where I do them for two days. And now I run them virtually because, you know, I have students across the world. And rather than make them all fly here to Vegas, I just run it virtual. And I do one, which is two days on how to build a purpose for life. You know, because you're not supposed to build a business plan and then make your life fit around that. You're mm. supposed to build a life plan and then make your business fit within your life plan. Oh, your wealth has to fit within like your wealth plan. My 30, 30 X wealth. I want people to walk away with a plan for their wealth. No one plans their wealth. People spend more time planning their weekend than they do their wealth. It's like, People spend more time, et cetera, this one kills me. They spend so much time planning their wedding and not one minute planning their marriage. Oh, yeah. They plan how to get the kid to hospital to make sure it's born on time, but there's no plan how to raise the kid. Wow. So, you know, when you look at those sorts of things, I know when, when my wife told me we were going to have twins, I remember the first thing I did after I picked my jaw up off the ground is I, I literally went to Amazon how to raise twins. Please find me some books on this stuff because I have no clue. You know, I'm, I'm a studier. Whenever I set my mind to something, I want to study it. I want to get great at it and master that thing. So uh, man, this is amazing. Another knowledge bomb. This is amazing. Great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing openly all this great information that you're giving to us and so many nuggets that you can give to us in uh, this short amount of time. As a leader uh, in the uh, professional development industry, mm -hmm. who and what do you reference for growth and why? Oh, okay. So we're going to go three angles on this answer. Firstly, I'm going to go way back when. So growth, uh, Ilya Prigogine did a study and uh, he won the Nobel Science Prize for this on a, su on a subject called perturbation, which explains the growth of everything. Unless there is pressure, there is no growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and there must be there must be a level of pressure for there to be growth. Um, you know, like the, the water only boils because there's heat put underneath it type thing. A tree that has more solid roots because of the wind, a team that goes through negative scenario comes together stronger type thing. Mm. So first of all, there must be pressure for there to be growth. And that's, again, why business coaching is one of the things that works, you know, because there's pressure. Unfortunately, for most business owners and entrepreneurs, what I find, Cedric, is there is no pressure to do anything other than pay the bills. And so if you end up with a goal that is, I got to make wages or I got to pay the bills, guess what ends up happening in your life? You pay the bills. Mm. There's no pressure to do anything other than pay the bills. Wow. And that's what you do. You know, and that's that's the worst thing, because I, I learned goal setting many years ago in three layers. There's negative goal setting, which is I don't want to be fat. You know, I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be something or other. So it's negative. It's getting away from a negative. Second layer of goal setting is positive goal setting, going towards a positive. I want to be able to run three miles in this period of time. I, I want to be able to do that five days a week. Or, you know, I want to have a, a million dollars in net assets and a hundred thousand in cashable assets. So mm. instead of I don't want to be broke, tell me the goal. Instead of I don't want to work 80 hours a week, I want to be working four days a week, six hours a day. That's what I want to be doing. That's my goal. So move towards is much stronger than move away from. And then the final layer of goals is the legacy goal. So, you know, what's it's about more than you. And that's why my goal for Action Coach is world abundance through business re-education. So that's what I'm aiming for in my lifetime. I want my lifetime to create an abundant world by, you know, working one business owner at a time, wow. one business person at a time. So the second way to answer your question around uh, growth is that for, for growth to happen, there needs to be a level of knowledge that is ahead of the growth that needs to happen. So when, when I'm looking to grow a business, and let's, let's just look at employing someone. In fact, today I was talking with uh, my chief of staff, and she was talking to me about a, a certain area of the business that we need more performance in. And I said, well, okay, we need to hire someone. And my philosophy is, let's say I've got a, let's say I buy a business that's doing $2 million and I want it to do a hundred million. Mm. Do I recruit someone who knows how to run a $2 million a year business? Or do I recruit someone that's run a hundred million dollar a year business? Wow. You know, so the knowledge must be where we're going, not where we're at. Wow. And so, 
if if I see a lack of growth, I see that there's just no knowledge to get there. To be uh, slightly negative around that, a business grows to the owner's level of incompetence. The moment you run out of knowledge, the business runs out of steam. It's it's pretty simple that way. How do so, you find those people? Uh, you, same way you find anyone. You know, we recruit, but we're a recruiter. We're not a hirer. Okay. A hiring person runs an ad in the help wanted section and mm. looks for people that are out of work. Mm. <laughs> you're, you're, rec- you're a recruiter for a football team, Cedric. Are you going to all the guys that got cut from the team and hoping you can find one of them that you can make into a decent player? Or are you going looking for guys that already have a job playing on a football team and saying, huh? See, when I go out and look for this person and we found one particular lady that we really like, and she's already running a division of another company for someone else. Now she's a head of a division. We want her to be CEO of a certain thing. So it's like, we'll have a headhunting firm approach her and say, hey, we know you're doing a phenomenal job at the company you're running. We've got someone interested in you coming and running a whole company. Any interest in that? She's great at what she does. You find people who are great at what they do. You got to recruit. Don't be a hirer, be a recruiter. Recruit great people, recruit the best. I always tell my team, let's hire good, build great. You know, we got to build them though. So I'll still have to work with her a whole bunch if we get her. That's if we get her, you know, if not, we'll have to keep hunting and find someone else. We'll hire a, we, we look to head hunting firms to find us the best of the best. So the third way I'll talk to you about growth is I, I use a, so in this one here, this was my last book that went bestseller all across the world, pulling profits out of a hat. We talk in there about strategy. And one of the things that we we look at in strategy is four core four core principles in strategy, and that is uh, leverage, scalability, opportunity, and marketability. Now, when you look at scalability, my definition of scalability is the next sale costs less and is easier. Okay. Now, one of the key factors in this day and age to scaling any business is the removal of humans. So the more you remove humans, especially from the sales process, the more you get scalability in a business. So for instance, if you look at what uh, Uber did, all Uber did, now Cedric, you and I are old enough to know this as a bunch of millennials listen to this and have no clue how to uh, get a taxi. But right. we, You had to call someone, they answered the phone, right. they then got on the other phone to the dispatcher, the dispatcher <laughs> then got on the radio to all of the taxis yeah. and like it was a three human process to right. get a taxi, right? That's why things broke down. It didn't work. Yeah. All Uber did is say, let's remove all the humans and let's make it that you press a button and it gets to that one. And then, hey, presto, it's done. Yeah. So we look at in, in scaling and in growth, two things, mostly scalability. How do we scale faster? And your strategy is important in that. Your business modeling is very important. And that's why I suggest read that book. But then also leverage. Now, leverage, when I first learned it, I learned leverage as uh, more with less, achieving more with less, ever more with ever less. And then I studied it a bit and I came across the mathematical formula for leverage, which is divide to multiply. Anyone wants to see an example of that? Uh, on my YouTube channel, I do a big video called Five Ways to Multiply Business Profits. So just look up uh, Brad Sugar's Five Ways to Multiply Business on, on YouTube. There's a whole video there. And you can you can subscribe to my YouTube channel too. Excellent. Absolutely. Good plan. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, but uh, so I then started teaching that and people didn't quite grasp it. So I was like, how do I teach this where people can get it? So my definition of leverage is do the work once, get paid forever. Do the work once, get paid forever. Um, this this one up here is my book on real estate, the real estate coach, right? Why do I love real estate? I buy a house how many times? Not a trick question, Cedric. How many times do I got to buy a house? One time. How That's long it. will I get rent off it? Forever. forever. In fact, the book, how many times do I write the book? One time. One how time. long do I get paid for it? Forever. forever. I build a business that works without me. How many times do I build it? One time. How long do I get paid? Forever. Yeah. So let me yeah. break it down. Employee work. Do the work once, get paid once. Now, most business owners are still doing employee work. They're wondering why they don't get owner's money because they're doing employee work. Do the work once, get paid once. If you're a hairdresser and you're cutting hair, all you're doing is doing the work once and getting paid once. You can't make a fortune that way. Now, management work is do the work once, get paid long-term. Recruit people, train people, build systems. That's management work in a business. Owner's work build new products, build new programs. See, if we take leverage and you compare it to something we all know, what's it? Oh, we all know this thing, right? The iPhone, right? How does, let's use that as the leverage story. 
Steve Jobs, way back when, started this little company called Apple, made computers. Bill Gates, other end of Silicon Valley, started this little company, made software. Bill Gates goes on to become the richest man in the world. Steve Jobs gets fired from his company. Mm. Why? Steve Jobs built a computer once and sold it how many times? Once. You make it, you sell it. You've got to make it to sell it. you got to make it to sell it. Steve Jobs uh, gets fired from his company. And now he goes off and runs this little company called Pixar. Yeah. He buys this movie company and turns it into this multi-billion dollar company, sells it off to Disney. What yeah. did he learn while running Pixar? A, he learned how to be a good leader and manager, right? He had yeah. to learn those skills because he was not that good at it apparently in the beginning. Yeah. What else did he learn? He learned leverage. You make a movie how many times? Once. Yeah. How many times you sell it? Now, Disney bought the movies off of Steve Jobs. How many times does Disney still sell Monsters, Inc. today? How many ways does Disney still sell Toy Story today? How, in fact, how many ways does Disney sell you the mouse? I got five kids, right? Young kids, few, few of me young, few of me in college. <laughs> how many ways do you think Disney sells me Frozen? How many frozen <laughs> toys, dolls, movies, right. soundtracks, coloring karaoke, books. <laughs> coloring books? How many dolls, Pencils. sleepwear, <laughs> bedding sets? Yeah. Like Disney is the geniuses of leverage in the world. They are such geniuses of it. I love studying their business. They are so smart. It's not funny when it comes to that. You think of the ways they sell you the mouse. You can buy land, you can buy a uh, cruise, you can buy, yeah. stay at the Disney hotel. You can, yeah. like the number of ways yeah. they sell you the mouse. I call it the Disneyfication of business. Mm. Take one thing and sell it a million ways. Jeez. Take one thing and sell it a million ways. My intellectual property, I take it once and I sell it a million ways. All the books, all the podcasts, all the franchises, all of the trainings, all the things. Take one thing and Disneyfy the heck out of it. I literally even have coffee mugs with my quotes on on them. That's how much oh, I Disneyfy everything I do. <laughs> so when it comes to growth, you've got to learn leverage. Leverage is do the work once, get paid forever. Get a customer once, get paid forever. I'll teach you a simple story right here. Uh, I just bought a share of a, a steak business, Wagyu Steaks, high end, very good product, high, very high end, very expensive. First thing I did, Cedric, I take the business where they're doing one-off sales. You buy from them, you buy it once and, and I turn it into a membership-based business where it's a repeat business, where every time you buy, you get it every single month. You get it wow. delivered. You get it the whole thing. You can pick, do I want it monthly, uh, bi-monthly, quarterly? You can pick, how often do I get it? So now I get a customer one time and I keep them forever. Mm. Now, by the way, you don't get customers, you buy customers. That's another one of my books. See that one up there? Where is it? Buying customers. Oh, Buying customers. If you put $1,000 into an ad and you get 10 new ad, 10 new customers, how much did it cost you to buy each one? hundred bucks. Got to buy customers. You can't get them for free. Oh man. Now the key to that is buying lifetime customers, profitably buying lifetime customers. Mm. How do you buy a customer that over their lifetime will spend a fortune with you? How do you mm. keep them for that lifetime? Anyway. Brad, this is amazing. I'm telling you, I just, I just purchased two books already. I just purchased uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pulling profits out of the hat. I'm like, man, I just, Man, this, is, this is so great brad thank you thank you so much uh brad if someone wants to connect with you and what you're doing where should they go bradsugars.com uh actioncoach.com if you want to get one of my coaches to come help you with your business amazon for all the books um and i'm going to give cedric i'm going to give you a special link in the show notes so people can get those things for 99 dollars or get 297 get all three of the dang thing make sure my team gets you that link we'll put it in the show notes everybody can get to that but i'm also on every dang social media i'm even on tiktok these days i don't dance but you know i definitely do <laughs> stuff on that so oh man brad 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 this is amazing brad sugars folks on behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, we want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. I love being here, buddy, and hopefully I'll get to meet you guys at one of my live events somewhere around the world some of these times. The BizX one, which is in Nashville next year, that'll be my next big one here in the U.S., so come over to Nashville and hang out. Uh -huh. So we want to thank you for joining us today on the Lead to Greatness podcast. And if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button, hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of these amazing episodes. And if you're on iTunes, go ahead and rate the podcast and leave a review. That helps get the word out to great leaders and entrepreneurs like yourself. So we want to thank you for joining us today. So remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace.